Monterey Church family. My name is Nina Damsky. I have been coming to Monterey Church for about a year. My family and I love it here. My husband's in the Navy, stationed over at MPS. And I want to take this time to share my journey of faith through battling infertility. Early on in our marriage, um, my husband was ready to have children. And as for me, I, um, I had a list of career goals that I wanted to meet. I quieted my flesh, went into prayer, and wanted to try to have children. I knew that there would be an uphill battle, but God was sure not to reveal the incline. In preparation, I was at the doctors. Um, I actually got pregnant with twins. And my husband and I were filled with joy and excitement. However, soon after, I lost them. And that was heartbreaking. There was some shame I felt. Um, guilt, sadness. Um, culturally, I don't think miscarriage was talked about much. Um, I had a little hope though because I did get pregnant. Well, three months to the dot, I got pregnant again. I was a little apprehensive, maybe of the past trauma. I didn't have a good feeling about this pregnancy. Went to the doctor, and it turns out that my pregnancy was developing somewhere else in the body. Um, I was confused, and I was angry. I entered a season of lament. It was hard. Um, I went to church, I sat in the back, um, I cried. I wasn't singing, you're a good, good father. I wasn't marching to the beat of, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Um, I cried a lot. My husband was put, put his armor on me and I ugly cried. Um, turned to the Bible, read about Sarah and Abraham. I said, honey, I don't think the Lord's in any rush to give us a baby. Um, everyone seemed to be getting pregnant. It was hard. I wrestled with the Lord. I probed him. Sad as I was, I also never prayed as hard as I did. Um, I was faithful with what I had, which is prayer and my church. I decided to talk to our pastor, my husband and I, and he pivoted our thoughts and began trusting the Lord. And I deviated from the dark pit that I had entered. And gave me strength. The pastor was able to shed some light on darkness. We were getting ready to transition out of San Diego to New Orleans and I got a notebook. I made all my appointments with the fertility doctors and before I wrote anything down, I opened the first page and knew I needed to be grounded in some biblical truths. So I wrote down some scriptures and then I was able to take notes. But if I didn't do that, I knew that their circumstance could chew me up and spit me out alive. So, moved to New Orleans, went to the doctors, started fertility treatment, and I got pregnant right away with our son, Michael. He was born prematurely, a blessing, a very healthy boy. He's five now. After that year, the desire to have baby number two was strong. I knew what to expect. I wanted it more than ever. My husband was very supportive. He was very content with our situation. You know, God worked in his heart and we both wanted another child. We went back to the fertility clinic and it wasn't happening. Round two, round three. I was a hot mess. I was hopped up on hormones. It was tough. It was really hard. Finally, my doctor had said, you know, it's time to go do some surgery go in, check out your environment, see what's going on. I said, great, I'll have answers. If I could cope with anything, if I had an answer, I couldn't have children, but you can cope with it. So, I'm getting out of surgery and my husband's patting my head, the doctor's next to me, and she says, honey, there's nothing wrong. And I broke down crying. I said, well, why am I not getting pregnant? Nothing made sense. She said, well, let's enter our last round of trying before I'm gonna need to go the most invasive route. I said, that's not quite possible. My husband's deploying in about a week. And she said, no, we're gonna make this happen. 
God made it happen. God made a way when I, we did not see a way. Those of you that can imagine, it takes some prep work getting pregnant without your husband. So God just broke down barriers. And I, one night I had a tough time. My anxiety was high. I was filled with fear and doubt and discouragement. And in that moment, the Lord used my husband to minister to me about surrendering. I put my head down on the pillow at night and I went to sleep at peace. I woke up in the morning and I got a positive. I didn't think God was quite done teaching me a lesson on surrendering and control as I had a difficult pregnancy with my son, Paul. He was born three months early. <laughs> the pregnancy was just really tough. Lots of bed rest and ambulance trips to the hospital. But God was with it. His hand, sovereign hand was on us. Paul's a miracle. He's a healthy three-year-old boy. My husband and I are grateful for how our journey of infertility has shaped our marriage, the way we parent, and most of all, our relationship with Christ. Any of this resonates with you, um, you're not alone. I want to encourage you, as I did with myself, to be faithful to what you have, which is prayer and the church. And if all you can do in a season of lament is say, Jesus, and you're doing better than you think you can do. There's power, and God likes a little bit of faith, because that's where he comes in and just works miracles. I want to bow our hearts to some scriptures. John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you will remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you could do nothing. You can do nothing. How close, I wonder. What's that proximity that Christ is to me? The Lord directed me to Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are Father. We are the clay, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. In the palm of God's hand is where we are. Clay starts in the form of mud. God is there with us, getting dirty, getting messy, molding us. And in that molding and developing process, the clay undergoes fire in a kiln where it's solidified and that is where God is working and developing so take heart the Lord has you in the palm of his hand I encourage you to praise him for all he has done and I challenge you to thank him for all that he has yet to do